And now we're back for the true fanboys and fangirls uh, because there's obviously a lot more to the story. And, yeah. I, you know, it, it's funny, Dick, because some people get frustrated with the amount of detail work that goes into understanding these things. Um, but I personally think that, in general, that any anything to understand almost any issue that matters in life, you need to be willing to dig into the details. Uh, the catch is that you don't want to dig into something that is poorly conceived and poorly constructed, right? Like, it's one thing if your messaging is bad, but you can fix that. But if the architectural thinking is bad, then that's frustrating. Um, right. But, but I, don't mind, I don't mind digging in as long as there's a logic that I'm eventually going to discover. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, that could be a that could be a, something you discover as well, that there is no logic. Um, but we're talking about SAP's cloud strategy, okay? And I think there is a strategy. I mean, I think long-term, there is a goal there. I think um, in terms of the achievement of this goal and, like, the end goal, that's still far in the future. I mean, now they have these assets. They have Concur. They have hybrids. They have um, success factors. And these are valuable assets. The, the question is, how do you bring them together? Um, a synergy between these assets is going to be the challenge. Because, I mean, is it, I mean, and we're not even talking in terms of technology. It's in terms of the, the customer base, in terms of sort of their approach to the um, domain in which they're experts. Um, and how do you mm, sort of bring all this stuff together? And I'm always fascinated when you start looking at one topic, for example, how S Innovations relates to Ariba or success factors, and trying to figure out long term how these pieces fit together. Because, I mean, for me, there's just this amazing amount of material out there regarding um, SAP's cloud strategy. And it's always very difficult to try and look at it in terms of its entirety. I mean, just just because there's there's so many moving parts, and to try and figure out the logic behind it, it's difficult. And then for someone else, for SAP as a company, to market this information or to to message it, um, it's definitely a challenge. Right. So I wanted to kind of take our viewers back in time a little bit to your own intellectual journey because you have been posting some blogs. You posted a couple really good ones on our Diginomica site that were, right. I think, kind of stakes in the ground for your thinking, if you will. Um, I think the, I think the, did the first one come out before? It was in between TechEd and, and Berlin, right? You, when you I think it was, I think it was right before. That was the one where I was exploring um, the idea of HTP and how all the pieces fit together. Um, yeah, that was November 9th, so that was like right before, right. right before, that was right before Berlin then. So take us back first to 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 Tech Ed Vegas, um, what what was on your mind coming into that show, and and what what did you learn from that? And obviously, the cloud platform was very very central to the keynote that Steve Lucas did. Well, what did you learn from yeah, that yeah. event? Well, I and mean, Bjorn as well, right? I mean, I think what was interesting there was that um, HCP really came into its own. I mean, at the one uh, Sapphire. Um, there was a analyst meeting with uh, Steve Lucas where he more or less introduced HCP. I mean, and the HCP has, has been around for a while, but that was really the first time that someone of a fifth caliber and, and his level in the organization came up and said, we have this platform. This is something cool. Okay. And so I was curious to see what would happen at this event because at this Sapphire, it was the Hannah Enterprise Cloud. Okay, that was everywhere. Um, and then to see it sort of transition, of course, there are two different events. I mean, Sapphire is more for the, the, the customer, for the, for the buyer, and the ticket is more for the developer. So it was obvious that HCP would hopefully um, play a central role in Vegas. But to see it really play the central role was a little bit of a surprise and a pleasant surprise because they, they've really earned it. And, right. what I, and what I remember in terms of Vegas, what impressed me the most was the one demonstration that Bjorn and Ian Kimball performed in the second keynote, because that was really an end-to-end -end, um, demo where they created applications using a lot of different services from HCP, um, where they 
got more or less APIs and they, then they created an application all using the platform and then they created um, a mobile app and it was all WYSIWYG and it was impressive. And that was a good example for me that the platform has really matured where something like that was was uh, possible. Right, because when, when SAP rolls out these new tools and platforms, a lot of times the people that have the early successes are willing to roll up their sleeves and spend a lot of time combing through uh, documentation that's still being perhaps formed and uh, a lot of trial and error, um, and and yet doing it live on the keynote stage shows a whole different level of maturity. Right. right. So you so you left you left TechEd. You did have some burning questions because you you had right. a post in the HCP versus HEC versus. So what what kinds of questions were on your mind heading into Berlin? What were you trying to figure well, out? Me, the one thing that was confusing to me. And that's why I said it in the short session was the discussion, the difference between portfolio and architecture. Okay, that distinction wasn't clear for me, and I kept seeing these pictures on the screen where things were described as being on HCP, and I couldn't figure out how the things work together. And there was one example with um, the new partner Burst where I couldn't figure out. They said we're on HCP, and I tried to figure out. Well, how could you be on HCP? And I basically came to the realization um, that how SAP uses the, the term was different than my assumption. Okay, and um, that took me really deep into the rabbit hole just because I had to try and work it out. Um, and in the end, I thought that I had a pretty good understanding of, of what was going on, but it wasn't totally clear. And right. then after Berlin, where S Innovations was introduced, things started falling, the piece started to falling really into the puzzle in a way that I could understand how everything fit together. Okay, um, and that's... Because you, know, you, because you noted that you were surprised by the amount of emphasis on, on S Innovations in the Berlin yeah. keynotes, right? Yeah. So that came well, as I mean, somewhat of a surprise to you. Right, because I mean, what was strange was that in Vegas, okay, HCP was everywhere, okay, and then you come to Berlin, and there's a shift, okay, and S Innovations is introduced, and in, in Burns' keynote, he puts a lot of emphasis on it, and it's a bit strange because this is a developer conference, okay, it's a developer conference, and really developers at this point have no um, real connection to this product, okay. There was nothing discussed in terms of what is technology, in terms of how do you extend it. Right. Um, so, so that was um, a bit of a, um, of a strange feeling that they introduced something, and it's sort of out of place. Um, and it was just when I started pestering people, and I pestered people for the entire event. I just started asking, how does it work? What's the relationship? Um, by the way, for for those uh, viewers, I have seen Dick in pestering mode. It's uh, something to watch. He's uh, he's good at getting his questions answered. Let's put it that way. Right. So I basically spent three days just trying to figure out how these pieces fit together. And in the end, I think I have a pretty good idea, or I gained an, a good idea of how everything sort of fits together. Um, and it's, I mean, it's 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 a vision, um, and I'll yeah. be curious to see what happens at Sapphire, for example, um, how they proceed on this vision. And in terms of developers, because developers were really the focus of Berlin, and it was, it was a decode, I mean, it was to be expected, um, HCP was pushed everywhere, which is which is the, the right message, I think. Right. So give it a crack, Dick. Uh, how do you see these pieces fit in together at this time? Well, I mean, what's what's the most important thing thing for me is that you see, and let's let's look at S innovations, okay? Because there's a certain conflict between S innovations, okay, in terms of the technology, because it's still in an ABAP stack, okay, in terms of how you develop it, how it's built, and like HCP, because if you look at where HCP is going. Um, with its relationship with Cloud Foundry, um, it has a, a different model. Okay, and so if you look at its innovations, they are first of all they're part of the the managed cloud, 
and they are part of the the um, public cloud, as it's called, so the SaaS applications. Okay, so so they, they bridge both worlds, um, and the, that that foundation. Okay, in terms of um, where you place these these um, products, it's 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 pretty clear for me. The question is, what happens in terms of let's say five years? Okay, is S Innovations going to stay? in the same architectural model that it has now, or is it going to change and move towards HCP? And this is a little bit of a power struggle be between S Innovations in terms of, because it's probably going to be the one that sucks in the most customers, um, right. and HCP, which is more Cloud Foundry, um, Docker, and um, microservices. So I mean, you could think like five years that they will, um, S Innovations will be using more of the HCP services or because there's a, a hybris example. They're doing commerce as a service based on um, Cloud Foundry. But what happened with that, they basically had to do it from scratch. Okay, right. and the question is how would this be possible with it within S, S Innovations? Okay, because you have um, a simplified database, okay, for all these different, for finance, for logistics, and then you'd have to build on top of that, you would have to build, for example, microservices. How would that work? Could that work? You probably couldn't use um, ABAP, but ABAP is efficient as as you look at, um, for example, the example of by design, for example. They have a lot of experience there with, with ABAP. Um, so this is sort of the interesting questions which arise as you sort of take a, a step back. Right. So you, th you think about it in terms of right now the simple suite, starting with simple finance, is kind of envisioned as more of a, you know, I don't want to say vanilla product, but the idea is that you don't customize it extensively beyond right. the core configurations that you would do. Um, but the question then becomes... What if I want to build out on that? It makes logical sense for that to be on the Haunted Cloud platform, but that's not necessarily, well, I mean, not necessarily where that's going to happen, right? Yeah, well, that, that depends on, on what, what you want to do. Okay, you basically would have two options. Either you could say, I want to customize the hell out of it, then I move to the heck. Move okay. to the Haunted Enterprise Cloud, right. right. Yeah. So, so then, if, if let, let's say, for example, I am an on-premise customer and I have a lot of um, my own customization that I want to try and retain, then I would move that to the HANA Enterprise Cloud, okay? If, for example, I was able to keep with the standard blueprints in the S Innovations, then I might stay, the application itself would stay in the public cloud, but the extensions, as you mentioned, would be based on HCP. And that, of course, would probably be the best model because it would enable, um, for example, right. if you have a, a partner, then they might have experience working on HCP and they could exploit that knowledge that they've gained either via um, success factors extensions on extensions for um, S innovations, for example. But this is, of course, right. five years from now or something. But, but right now we don't really have a clear picture of how the S innovations suite would tie into the Haunted Cloud platform, right? We don't, I, mean, we don't I, I mean, I mean, I mean, my, my assumption is initially they will use some of the services, okay? Because, right. I mean, right, right now, I mean, we have right. to remember, they aren't going to, if, because you have the platform, okay? And you can build applications on the platform, okay? You could build your own custom app, okay? And it would run on the platform, but it is not in the platform, it's using the platform. And S Innovations will do the same thing. Because if we remember HCP, okay, it has what's called the, the API, the application services. Okay, and we're talking about things such as the document service or the identity service. Okay, and I could imagine those being used at a very early stage. Okay, right. in terms of in terms of long term, there's some interesting things to consider. For example, using HCP for Fiori usage, or to do mobile apps, because imagine, for example, that you are remember the one demo we saw that I talked about in the beginning. Imagine that running on a S Innovations platform. Right. Okay. 
and that that gets to be exciting because then you have the the combination um, of both worlds. Okay, you have a, a business suite in a SaaS environment, which I think a lot of people would like to have. Okay, and then you have the ability to exploit HTTP's functionality to extend it. I mean, and you could right. do the same thing with by design. I mean, that's what people sort right. of forget. The one um, example that they, the one demo that they, they made in both key, uh, keynotes in Berlin and in, in Las Vegas, you could easily have done with by design as well. Yep. And we're going to get to by design for you by design uh, diehards out there shortly. Um, but Dick, I want to get back to this for a sec because I think okay. I think there's something interesting about this S Innovations versus HANA Cloud Platform piece because, like you said, it might start with consuming some microservices, but from a revenue and strategic importance standpoint, if as someone who's like a platform type of guy and would like to see something like HCP be successful, I really want to see HCP tied into Simple Finance because I think Simple Finance and that part of the operation is going to generate a lot more revenue a lot faster. Right. Um, like the Honda Cloud platform is not a significant revenue generator for SAP at this time, right? I mean, I can't remember what exactly the last number was on that. Uh, I think it was was right. it a couple hundred million? It wasn't. Right. It wasn't a I lot. Right. Don't quote. It's, don't quote right. me on that number. But right now, it's not a big piece, which is not necessarily a problem. But it right. does. You have a natural tendency in a in a business, which SAP is, to put your resources where the revenues come from, right? Mm -hmm. And so, to me, if if the HCP assets are not perceived as strategically relevant to the S innovations part of the business, you run the risk that the HCP is somewhat neglected in terms of resources. And if so, I don't think SAP is going to be taken very seriously as a platform. And I think in my opinion, and this is my opinion only, I think that hurts SAP in the long term competitively. Yeah, but I mean, I think what we have to remember, okay, is that there are two two areas in terms of um, in terms of revenue building. The first comes from the customer. The second, of course, comes from the ecosystem itself. Right. Okay, and the ecosystem has to be made. Um, SIs and other people have to be made aware that if you want to extend an S Innovations app. Then it has to be via HCP, okay. And I think if you get pressure coming from ecosystem regarding the, the platform, then that will give it the boost that it that it really needs. Um, sure. So, I, but that was my point: is that SAP needs to put that out there and say that's the direction, and that's how we want you to think about so the S innovations. Is that you extend them via the plat the Hana Cloud platform, and if SAP puts that out there, it ties the two together. And right. suddenly, suddenly HCP is not off on the side as kind of like a what skunk work isn't fair, but it, you know it's like the thing of like instead of just having the diehards that are working on that night and day, you then tie it into the core of where the business is headed, right. Right? right? And then I think that changes a lot of things. Right. I mean, but I think this innovation is is too new, and if you take right. a look at what, what's really interesting is that they announced it, okay, um, in Berlin. And there's very little analysis of the offer. Um, right. I mean, people more or less regurgitate the uh, press release, but there's no real analysis of what's of what's going on or it, regarding its importance, which was rather curious. Um, right. Because so it, it is, so it does remain to be seen exactly how the market receives that part of the the portfolio as well. It is pretty new, so it is. I'm getting a little ahead. Of, I'm getting a little ahead of myself saying a lot of revenue will be derived from it. It's just something that I happen to think. Um. Right. Well, I mean, there was this one study which which I read um, from a German consulting company that said that in terms of the cloud areas that companies are looking for the most, finance was one of the highest, which was a little bit of a surprise for me. Um, so I mean, that's off. I mean, obviously, simple finance is going to be where the push is. Um, coming from, and the question is, how can they they move simple finance and sort of the momentum behind that into the other S innovations uh, platforms, other not right. platforms but offerings? So that right. that's going to be the one challenge. Um, right. But I think it's going to be curious to see what to do between now and Sapphire. Um, right. Because I mean, my 
my assumption is is like at Sapphire we might see a second um, we might see a second um, S Innovations product, maybe logistics, something like that, or we we might see, for example, S Finance being offered as a as a SaaS. I mean, I, we we know that it's it was announced, but we haven't seen anyone really using it as a SaaS application yet. Um, and that's, I mean, curious for me because I mean, it sort of brings the whole story together. Because right now in HANA SP09, you now have the multi-tenancy functionality, as you wrote your one blog about, which was quite good. Um, that would really come into play at that point. And that'll be curious to see how that all sort of fits together. Right. Yep, that would answer a lot of interesting questions around HANA's support of multi-tenancy going forward, which is kind of a hot topic uh, inside and outside of SAP. Um, but uh, so, 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 Dick, there's a couple different things I want to hit on okay. before we... And one of them, though, we, we do need to get to by design, right? Because right. Uh, by design is... You just can't... It's a product that will not die, right? Like... Yeah. Um, That's and, right. uh, and, you know, it's, I mean, we, yeah. it was on, it's been on the block. I, it's fair to say it's been, like... There, at least a couple times in the last few years, there's been kind of a, you know, okay, should we kill this product type of thing? And the thing that By Design always has going for it is that it does pretty well with with customers. I mean, there's not a huge customer base, but it the the sales numbers always look pretty good. And right. um, so so you and I both met with with uh, Reiner Zinner, who's I guess you could say the the head of the operation from a development side. Um, right. And 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 he's got a renewed sense of excitement about what's happening. So how how would you see it? Well, I mean, I think what's what's important is to see with by design is that in terms of what it what it can can do best. And I think that's in terms of the two tier model with the subsidiaries and then with the mothership in terms of the 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 main corporate base with the on premise ERP. I think. That's where it sort of hit the uh, sweet spot, and I think that's where it's getting a lot of its business. And in terms of long term, if you look at, for example, a combination uh, by design and S innovations in terms of this two-tier model, that's a very interesting um, concept and one that could sort of push by design into sort of the limelight. Because right now, S innovations it is probably going to take up a lot of the air in the room in terms of um, the press in terms of the attention if by design can say, hey, we can support this if you take the S innovations and you have a subsidiary in who knows, um, somewhere in, in Africa or in, or in Asia, a smaller country, we can support you there. I think that would be um, where it should sort of push in, in the future. But I mean in terms of its 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 death, I mean the, the question is whether that was internal or whether that was just in the market. I mean, right. I think they had some serious yeah, messaging yeah. missteps um, right. that I don't think people really internally were were going to kill it. I think there was more or less there were some messaging problems and the market and that the competitors just jumped all over it. Yeah, and, and, and I guess what I wanted to get across rather than fan in the flames of those rumors is simply to point out that, that, that there's always been a customer base out there for by design sometimes more vocal about its strengths than SAP itself because SAP had right. other fish to fry at that point, right? Um, right? But the interesting thing is that SAP also over time has kind of figured out what by design strengths lie, right? Because there was some, you know, uh, talk of chopping it up into components and right. um, that was before simple, the simple suite came along, right? And um, so now it's much more perceived again as a cloud ERP right. suite, and and it's been refocused on uh, sort of the higher end of the S small medium right. business marketplace, right? So, kind of a shift in focus. But as you point out, that can play very well for companies that have a lot of subsidiary operations and right. things like that, and that could be right. a real sweet spot. So, right. So and I mean, the I other thing I think. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, the one thing that we have have to remember is that it's been ported to HANA, okay, and that's, um, there were a few messages about that, and then basically there was no further attention. So it's it's running on HANA, 
Okay, which is really interesting when you think about the, the, the possibilities there. And there was a video which I just watched recently from the development head of by design. Um, and he said, yeah, the first step was just a, a port to HANA that was just um, the initial movement. And now what they're going to do is now they're going to start exploiting HANA, the functionality in HANA. Um, so expect to see more innovation coming from by design as they start exploring ways to, because there's all the functionality within HANA re regarding text and geo mapping and all that cool stuff, they can now start exploiting that yeah. in by design to move in ways that weren't, that wasn't for, um, previously possible. Yeah, and not every customer is running, not every by design customer is on HANA currently, but Right. But uh, what's happening is it actually is getting rolled out to customers as we speak. So, um, right. Dick, I think you hit on another really interesting point about it too, which is that by design, also in this vision of events, it it does provide a real valuable sort of proving ground for the some of the simple finance cloud concepts because by design is also right. an ABAP cloud ABAP based cloud product. So, right. So I, I guess the way you could look at it is that suddenly it, it seems like less of a of a tangent in a way and more central to how SAP might think about some of its cloud development going forward. So it's interesting. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, ABAP isn't going to die, and that's another thing that we have to talk about because there were some discussions that went on uh, because there was one slide in Berlin that said ABAP in terms of the whole cloud um, activities. And immediately, um, people started saying, well, ABAP is going to be running on HTTP. How is this going to work? Um, and I don't think ABAP is going to be supported out of the box in HTTP. If it's going to be supported at all, um, it will be coming via a Docker container, for example. Um, this is a little bit in terms of a technical deep dive, but it just makes things a lot clearer in terms of the expectations of, of um, the, the ABAP developer community. Right, right, definitely. So, Dick, we also had some reader questions. Uh, we had a Twitter exchange recently around uh, the extending the simple suite, right? So, simple finance is the focus, and then the question was around HCM in particular, and right. so how does this fit in with Success factors: Will there be a, a, a simple HCM, an SHCM, or whatever it would be called, and how would that fit in with the? These are the kinds of questions SAP will have to right definitely gra grapple with going forward. I don't, I don't know that we have a clear answer as of this taping to those things, but that that's coming up, right? right? Those kinds of issues right. are going to come up. Well, I mean, those are the questions that that the customers are going to be be asking, and I mean, I think. I mean, I think long, long term, there's definitely going to be a, a consolidation. Um, how that works out, I have no idea. If some things are going to survive, if Employee Central is going to come in, um, I don't know. Um, but obviously, it doesn't make sense to have three different products because then, if you had, you would have the the S Innovations version, then you would have um, the Success Factors version, and you have the on-premise version. That's just insanity. So there has to be some consolidation long term. How that works out, I don't know. And I mean, you also have to think in terms of like concur. How does concur fit into that now? Right. Um, because then it's obviously it's a SaaS application. Um, it's similar in some ways in terms of it's LOB focused to like field glass. How does that all sort of fit together? And I think those are questions which still have to be have to be answered in terms of their domain focus. There's a there's a good sort of synergy, but in terms of the underlying technology, long term, I don't know. Um, right, and it raises some really interesting questions in terms of where the cloud market is headed and how how large enterprises are going to buy cloud products because often it seems like now uh, the early history has been kind of much more line of business, right? So buy a CRM product, which was led by Salesforce in that market, or buy an HCM product, which is where SAP likes to think it can take Workday on. <laughs> that, yeah. remains to be, that remains to be seen, but the point being, um, it, it's been much more focused that way, but then now you're seeing much more of a move 
towards, if not a suite, like with Workday adding financials, to start building something out that way, or right. Salesforce, Salesforce, which is not trying to build a suite, but is certainly making it possible to to build a suite on its platform, and so now you're right. seeing uh, several different cloud ERP variations on the Salesforce.com platform, and it is going to raise some interesting questions for SAP in terms of, first of all, where, where are customers' buying patterns going to go, and if, if customers start showing an interest in, if not a suite, then at least being able to kind of plug and play different pieces that get along nicely, that would imply SAP has a lot of work to do around these various products in terms of, you know, how they're going to fit together and is it going to be a classic integration job or is it going to be more of a platforms and protocols type of job, right, where you try to standardize on a platform versus try to do kind of point-by-point -point integration and such. So it would be interesting to see how that plays out. Well, I mean, we haven't mentioned it yet, but, I mean, there is the HANA Cloud integration platform, which is right. part of SAP, um, and that's its quiet around the product. Again, I don't know why integration is really an important topic, um, but that has an important role to play as well, just in terms of moving the information from between these different products, and ideally that there would be HCI um, offers which are available to say you want to connect Concur and Product X, here you go. Here's the, the package um, that you can use to do that. And I think that's that's an opportunity that we haven't seen too much um, recently on, and I think it's going to be important as people start buying various products and they want to sort of integrate them. And I don't know whether that's something that SAP has to do or whether that's something that the ecosystem partners, an HCI partner would say, I will help you integrate Concur and, who knows, Field Glass or right. something like that. Yeah, it just seems like the more... I mean, obviously, integrations never is out of the box as you want it to be, but it seems like the more right. there's, a, the more there's a coherent way of doing that, it, rather than like, oh, well, it's different when you want to tie success factors and, you know, uh, hybrids together versus you know something else. You know, like it should be, if you want to, if you want to pull uh, Ariba and Concur together, there's, you know, it, it should all be sort of a similar set of protocols or options, I think. But all right, so let's add this on our Sapphire wish list. Um, the beginnings, well, I mean, the beginnings, the beginnings of a of a more coherent story on how the pieces might fit together. Sapphire is not a real tech show, so we're not going to get right. super super deep into the weeds there. But I think it would be good to hear a little more coherence around how the pieces are going to fit together. Right, and I mean, I think that as we're talking about integration, we have to remember as well that these are SaaS applications. Okay, so there shouldn't be a lot of customization. There'll be configuration, right. but not customization. So it's much more easier to do an integration between two SaaS applications than between a SaaS application and an, for example, an on-premise application. Right. Um, and so and that's as, something yeah, should be and as as you as you point out, there's a growing third-party arena of cloud integration brokers that, that want this business. Right. And, and and it may be that SAP solves part of this problem simply by, you know, forming some strong partnerships with some of these types of cloud brokers as well. So it's not like SAP necessarily has to figure it out for themselves. It's just there's a message there that that um, that is going to be, I think, needed to be heard with some clarity in the future. Yeah, but I mean, I think that that's a, that's a big opportunity. The way you say a customer has three applications, okay? They have success factors, Ariba and Field Glass. You say we will throw in the integration, for example, as right. part of the deal. Um, and I think that would be a, a very useful, a useful thing to do. And then you could say, I mean, as I think we saw at Sapphire, once you have that, once you have this interplay of of data, then you can also do applications that are, for example, running on HCP. That I think there was one really, really great application which showed, I think it was Ariba, Success Factors, and Field Glass, where they were combining the data be between, or uh, maybe just Field Glass and Success Factors, I don't remember. And I mean, that was a great example because you could look at your contingent workers and your normal employees basically um, without knowing that they're coming from two separate applications. Right, okay, and that's I think where where they should sort of head to because they have these assets, they have um, these different applications now, and now they can sort of bring these things together, and use Fiori to make the the UI um, easy for people to consume. Well, be, be, I think you've hit on a really key point there because 
in my mind, a big part of the cloud feature ahead is is partners, developers, uh, smart industry players with great ideas, building their own apps that take advantage of these advances. And you know, you talk a lot about microservices, but you know, building out services, uh, right. you know, whether you're utilizing mobile functionality or pulling in some of Hana's predictive capabilities. To I don't know about you, but the the most kind of excitement I have felt at SAP events is usually with smaller partners that have built something really kick-ass. Um, right. It kind of pushes the envelope on these technologies. Right. I mean, the one the one thing that I think is right now a little bit of a problem is the industry space. I mean, they, they, they brought up the industry cloud in at the Sapphire, but I really haven't seen the push there that I had, I would expect. I mean, there are some announcements regarding oil and gas or something like that, but I expected a lot more. Um, and I think that's where the they could really help the ecosystem move in this area by giving them the opportunity either via technology or or money to really move because like manufacturing you show me manufacturing um, SaaS applications from SAP maybe I think there's some in by design but um, in terms of like HCP or something like that there's there's nothing there nothing yet yep okay. So there's one final thing, Dick, which is uh, you actually wrote a post, uh, which I just dug up on my browser, uh, on, again on Diginomica, where you've written several classics. This one uh, was October 5th, and it was called, Hey, SAP, Stop Flirting with Cloud right. Foundry and Propose. Uh, and then uh, a little further down the road at, at uh, Decode slash TechEd, there were some uh, announcements. So... Did SAP uh, fulfill your request? Uh, are you satisfied with that, or is SAP Not now yet. proposed? I mean, or? I mean, they're 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 still flirting, okay. Um, and if you look at, we we know that something is coming, okay. Um, and we know that HCP is going to be moving closer to Cloud Foundry um, by uh, doing technology that allows people to use the the uh, Cloud Foundry tools. But when that's going to happen? I don't know. I mean, the next event where it'd be really be relevant would be like next year at a decode. But to be truthful, that's a long time. Right. Um, and so, so, mean, so, just, so just to take a step back, though, why do you think that's important? Well, I mean, the one thing that, that, that Cloud Foundry would provide is it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a standard. Okay? Because if you are trying to bring developers into the HCP environment, okay, if they already know the the tools, if they already know what to expect, okay, it provides people a lot of, um, a, it, it just in terms of ease of use, it provides a lot. And if you look at like IBM's uh, Bluemix, it's also Cloud Foundry based, okay, and it just provides them with an excellent foundation. Uh, and I think that's right. what we have to remember as well. I mean, and it slowly looks like Cloud Foundry is becoming a right. standard, if not the standard, in terms of past environments. So why not right. move in that direction now um, to sort of to grab the trend early and bring developers over um, right. rather than having to wait. So ju just to be just to be perfectly clear, the the real appeal here is really being able to pull in. Uh, open source C type developers and folks that are not as familiar with SAP backends, which has been a stated goal of SAPs for quite some time. Um, and SAP has done significant outreach along these lines in recent years. Right. But but your point being that when if, if I'm already familiar with Cloud Foundry and, and I can use those tools to also build on the HANA Cloud platform, then SAP is way ahead versus trying to get non-SAP developers to spend time on its own proprietary right. Is that is that what you're getting at there? Yeah. I mean that's 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 one important thing. And if you look in terms of what SAP can provide Cloud Foundry as well, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion that Cloud Foundry is moving towards supporting or providing certain APIs. Okay, and SAP, and if you look at like Hybris, Hybris is now, as I mentioned before, is creating a commerce as a service based on Cloud Foundry. Okay, and imagine that. Uh, 
I just uh, you you cut out for a sec. You were talking about Hybris's commerce uh, commerce is developments sort of, on a Cloud Foundry. Right. Yep, it's yep. Cloud Foundry based. Okay. And if you look at that as sort of a, an example of what SAP could provide back to the Cloud Foundry community, I mean, imagine other areas where they could create such services and then provide those to the Cloud Foundry community that some, for example, some other Cloud Foundry deployment could use. I mean, because there is a Cloud Foundry marketplace. Right. I mean, I think that if right. you provide services based on the standard, then other people could use them as well. Okay, which is exciting. Sure. Right, and 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 to me, the the thing that we sometimes lose track of in the sort of pursuit of the external developer is that the really exciting thing is when you bring classic enterprise developers together, right? So, right. Uh, who, who understand building at scale and dealing with enterprise level security and all that other stuff, and you are able to kind of bring those groups together culturally and locationally. And that's where it gets exciting and Perhaps uh, the the open UI five is where that's starting to happen the most. Right. Um, but that's there's very interesting. Of, yeah. Well, there, there's a lot of activity going on there, and what's also interesting is that looking at their approach on how they move outside of the SAP ecosystem is very intriguing. They're very aggressive. I think the the main f discussion area for them is isn't on SCN. It's on Stack Overflow. Right. Um, they made a conscious decision to go outside of the community. Which is, I mean, what you need. I mean, and it, it's not it's not an easy step to make, but it's an easy step to make if you want to expand your horizons, which is critical for SAP. I mean, and you look at, for example, how they're now moving into the Internet of Things space. I mean, they're also moving outside of the, the normal ecosystem to try and tap into the sort of the more hacker um, community in terms of IoT now. Right. Now with there was the one event um, during the decode in Vegas that was done by the Red Monk um, organization. Right. And that was yep. um, one excellent example of SAP going outside of its own own ecosystem to sort of bring these community people or bring these new developers into their right. sort of area. Right. So the and 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 that was based in Palo Alto, right? Which right. made which made it interesting for SAP to pull in folks that would not have hopped on a plane to Vegas just yet to check out SAP, but they're going to show right. up at an event like that. And, right. and also SAP had a bit of an element uh, of that with Decode as well with uh, not only more hands-on code sessions, but more folks right. from GitHub. GitHub had a presence at Decode, for example. and So I think what that does for SAP is it puts them into conversations with folks that, that come at these issues from a... Uh, very different perspective and that kind of dialogue I think is well I mean that's at the heart of design thinking right is is pull in right. pull in very different viewpoints earlier in your development process and in your planning process than you would have otherwise and what better way to do that than mash up these communities a little bit right but of course then it's really interesting to now return to the conversation that we had at the beginning about S innovations and the right. question is how do the two stories come together yeah, um, and there's definitely a conflict between these two sort of approaches, um, yeah. where ACP is more of a DevOps sort of um, a more of a modern approach, and S Innovations is still it's still a monolithic legacy application. Yeah, it runs in the SaaS world, but it's it's two different things. And that's what did you say was what did you say was DevOps the HCP? Yeah. Yeah, with, yeah, with yeah. The, with the the DevOps right. approach, I mean, it's it's a pause, and S Innovations is a is a SaaS applic is a SaaS right. application. That's but it's sort of the culture around the two exactly. entities. There's a definite then difference there, and the question is how that's going to play out. I I would argue that the future of the company rides on how that plays out, and. Right. I won't give I won't give my full opinion on that at this time, um, but but I do think that's a really significant issue that it, that gets back to significant cultural issues inside of of SAP. And, and to be fair to SAP, a lot of large enterprise software vendors are going through some of the same um, sort of struggles. But but to me, you know, I I strongly believe that that the more sort of open um, approach, the more I don't know how you would describe it easily, but the more 
externalized approach is going to be the the ecosystem approach. I think is going to win. Um, that, but that's just that's just me. I mean, I could be wrong, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 probably more difficult, um, yeah. because the 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 culture is so different. And I mean, as you say, I mean, legacy vendors have legacy legacy applications. They also have all the customers, so they have the advantage of that as well. Um, yep. And how you move people from the the on premise, which I don't want to say legacy. I mean, that's basically from the on premise world to the cloud world, and everything is is connected. And that's why, if you look at the S innovations, that's why it's so important that they want to bring the S the S innovations innovations that are in the cloud to the on-premise customers so that they can move these people sort of with them right. as they as they evolve. Um, that's right. definitely going to be a challenge and I think that's going to be right. one of the greatest challenges um, as S Innovations evolves and as becomes more of a cloud focus integrated with MHCP then at some point the ability to move innovations that are in the cloud first approach back to the on-premise world that is no longer going to be as easy as it will in the very beginning. No, no. And, and by, I actually think that um, that SAP's attempt to, I mean, <laughs> hashing hybrid has become kind of a sport in our industry. <laughs> uh, the cloud purists, right, um, bashing this notion of hybrid is kind of a fallback strategy for companies right. who, who maybe don't have the pure SaaS products that or in, in the opinion of those who criticize them, they say, well, they, that's why you're going hybrid is to kind of play to your strengths. But I actually think that is the right of kind of thinking for SAP customers. I think that's a strong point. But as you point out, the future of, of how that evolves is going to be kind of interesting. What, what, I, what I think more than, I guess the way I look at it is, I don't necessarily look at it as S innovations versus the HANA Cloud Platform, but I look at it in terms of, uh, kind of an open SAP versus a closed SAP, uh, I guess is how I would put it. Right. So, in other words, when when you're building new applications, are you in a interactive process with external constituents who are providing you with significant input into what you're trying to build next, or are you kind of, you know, huddled in 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 Waldorf somewhere, you know, building a, a next generation product all over again? Right. Um, and and to me, it's that that more open future, that kind of open dialogue approach is 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 the one SAP needs to travel on. And I see quite a bit of evidence of that. Um, so it's not like I'm giving SAP an idea. They they're already doing right. it. But but I do think there's conflicts there, Dick. And I think it's going to be very interesting how those conflicts impact these these products and right. how they come out. So. Right. I mean, what's what's in, in What's intriguing is that in the past you always had the idea of a hybrid cloud, where you had a mixture of on-premise and cloud assets. You didn't see that with S Innovations, right? Um, right. And that's something which I sort of realized in the last few minutes. I don't know what the exact meaning of that is, but that that's maybe a shift in terms of strategy. Because in the past it was always you combine everything as customer. You can have part of it on-premise, right. part of it in the cloud. And now, I think that might be changed in terms of the, the messaging, in terms of the direction. Right. So, so it's kind of a cloud first, but you can also do it on premise. But you, there's not like a mixture type of approach right. going on there. Yeah. Like that was that was the old model. That was with, right. and maybe that's one reason why HCI isn't in the 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 limelight is because previously. Each uh, played a critical role in terms of the hybrid. You could have right. something. You could have success factors in the cloud and have your other content on premise, and HCI would transfer stuff back and forth. Right. Um, that message wasn't didn't come out in Berlin, at least. Yeah. Well, I'm glad this conversation has provided you with the spark of a future investigation. Yes, of course. I would not want you to be without one for too long, so... I always have blog ideas. It's just oh, a good, yeah, exactly. time to write. Yeah, there's always more. I know you always usually have 10 or 15 ideas versus the one that comes out the door, but right. uh, But we always enjoy it when you manage to take the time. I, 
you you've really offered a lot to the community by what you've done. So really Thanks. appreciate appreciate those efforts. I know how hard it is to find that time. So right. hey, before we before we wrap up, just give me a quickie on. We, I think we identified a couple of open issues for SAP to kind of address, but just fast forwarding to the uh, Sapphire show six months or so from now, what do you think would result in a favorable Sapphire for SAP in terms of a couple of things that they could really nail? Well, I mean, we have to remember, first of all, that Sapphire isn't decode, um, and you right. have a different audience. I mean, I think it will be very important to see what they do with the S innovations. I mean, they introduced it. Um, now the question is, how are they going to tell it to people who really can buy the, these offers? I mean, I think that will be interesting to see what happens um, and to, to really see what the story is in terms of long term. They're going to have Concur. Um, I expect probably the CEO from Concur to be up on the stage, probably in Sapphire. And I think that will be interesting to see what sort of message they have there. I think they're going to be pushing the, the idea of the business network. And I read, I think, yesterday that they're now coming out with some sort of a, a new marketplace that I'll, I'll have to take a look at. Um, so that will be interesting to, to see what they're going to do with the idea of the business network. They always push it, um, but I think it's still not totally clear what they mean by that idea. Yeah, I, I've talked with a few uh, SAP users who are uh, cust prominent customer types who are like, what exactly is a business network? Right. Um, so maybe a little bit of work there, but I think you're right. That's probably a metaphor we're going to hear about. Uh, right. The only thing I would probably add is maybe a proper support on 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 run simple, right? Like a proper support on how how things are s simpler than they were a year ago, and what does that mean for ease of consumption? Because the Sapphire audience is all about Right. It's not about it's not about looking under the hood, right? It's about being able to implement things quickly and easily. Right. I mean, I think what would be, I mean, if I was doing the Sapphire, I would say you have um, an SFIN app and an S Logistics app running as a SaaS application with the Fiori UI. Yep. Um, if you had that, I think people would be very impressed. Because first of all, you would show that um, S Innovations is the SaaS application, and you would show that you can have um, a Fiori UI, ideally going through HTTP, for example. And just imagine the one demo. Well, I mean, it's a little bit of a different crowd, but something similar, where you do quickly do an app, um, an S Innovations app, on on the stage, something right. like that. I think that would really blow people away. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool if you had a, a line of business executive and a technical type like right there together just building something quickly. Right. Just talking that back and forth. I, I, I've always thought SAP should try to own that dialogue between the two, you know? Right. Um, right. I mean, it's, it's tough because that's sort of the demo that you want to have at a decode in terms of the development work. But I think what you want to show is just that these applications really are simple. Um, right. And that, I think, would be the best way to really go about doing it. Yep. All right. Well, always a pleasure. I'm glad we got to hash this out. I hope you guys feel we sufficiently hashed out SAP's cloud, uh, but I think there's only so much you can do at one chunk, so right. I think you should tell your kids that they can play with their iPad again, and we should wrap this. Okay, they'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. Did I miss anything? Are we good? I think we're fine. Yeah. Alright, thanks, Dick, for joining us. Appreciate your time. Okay, thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.